Good evening, Mount Nebo Church family and friends. We praise God tonight, for truly this is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We are thankful again tonight that the Lord has blessed us and favored us to where we can once again come together to discuss and to study his holy and divine word. But certainly from the word of God, we receive life, we receive light, and we receive uh, instruction on how to navigate uh, this thing called life. We're praising God for his grace and his mercy. Tonight, beloved, we want to share with you from a familiar passage of scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4. At your leisure, you can read verses 1 through 18, uh, but we won't read that far uh, down uh, on tonight. Uh, but at your leisure, you can read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, 1 through 18. Amen. <clears throat> Let's pray, and then we're going to get into our lesson for tonight. Certainly hope and pray that you will enjoy this lesson, that it would be impactful, it would be encouraging, uplifting, uh, motivating, uh, just at the end of the day, that it would be something uh, that you would find that would be uh, a source of strength in this season of your life. Father, we thank you once again for loaning us this time we have together tonight. We praise you, O oh God, for being our God. Thank you, Father, for all those who are with us tonight. Uh, thank you, Father, for those who will watch this uh, uh, later on. Father, we pray for strength. We pray for uh, your, your salvation. We pray, Lord God, that you will continue to lead us and guide us and direct us in the way that you have us to go. Father, how we give you glory and honor, because without you, we are absolutely, completely, totally nothing. Uh, but I heard Paul said in Philippians, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Oh, God, strengthen us tonight that we may do your holy and divine will. Strengthen your people, Lord God that we may go forth and do all that you've assigned to our hands. God, we give you glory and we give you praise. It's in the wonderful and matchless name of him who died out on yonder's cross for the sins of the whole world. We ask and we give thanks. And it is amen. Tonight, beloved, I want to talk about the heart of a champion. The heart of a champion. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Uh, looking at verse one, I want to read this tonight from the King James Version. Uh, then we'll get into it. Paul says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Verse five, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Verse 8, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also Jesus might be made manifest in our body. The heart of a champion, the heart of a Champion, I, I believe tonight, you know, I can say this with great assurance and confidence, uh, that you heard this said before, winners never quit and quitters never win. Winners never quit and quitters never win. 
What, well, what do they do then? You've heard the saying, another saying, when the tough, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. While this may be true, there are times when the going gets tough that the tough desires to catch flight away from the pressures of this life. Becoming a winner involves having and possessing the strength to stay even when you feel like giving up. Let me say that again tonight. Becoming a winner involves having and possessing the strength to stay even when you feel like Give it up. Even when you feel like throwing in the towel, even when you feel like uh, just walking away from everything, the, the, a real champion, the heart of a champion involves and in possessing the strength to stay even against all of these emotions and feelings that are going on. It is the willpower to keep on keeping on when you rather would rather resign. The key to becoming a champion is one, ter determination. Secondly, it takes endurance. Thirdly, it takes persistence. And lastly, I would say it takes tenacity. So a champion is one who has determination, but also they have endurance, they have persistence, and they have tenacity. You cannot be successful in anything if you're not willing to pay the price. There's a cost. No matter what we do in life, there's a cost associated with doing it. Uh, whether that's uh, just having some leisurely fun, it costs something to do that. If, if you're going to climb the ladder on your job and move up to different positions, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost time of preparing and studying and, and, and getting to understand all of the inner dynamics associated with that particular job or that particular task. It costs something. Nothing comes to us for free. Talk to me, somebody. And so when we talk about paying the price, let's talk about that for a minute before we get deeper into our lesson on tonight. This is closing out Women's History Month. Women have helped to shape the fabric of our world. And without the contributions of women, our world would not even be close to what it is today. Talk to me somebody. As a world, as a nation, as a state, as a community, as a church, as a family, each of these areas have achieved much because of women, particularly women of color. I'm happy and sad all at the same time because as a country, we have not treated women fairly. We haven't been fair. We, we've utilized their gifts and their talents and sometimes don't even recognize who they are. That's sad. We need not look any further tonight than the confirmation hearing of Judge Jackson. When I think about women to some degree being treated unfairly, yet in the midst of unfriendly faces, she remains cool, calm under pressure. In the words of Senator Cory Booker, you have sat with grit and grace and have shown us just extraordinarily demeanor. He said, and again, talking about Judge Jackson, he said, you are my harbinger of hope. Hmm. And I sat there and I watched that clip uh, for quite a bit of time. And I kept rehearsing and going back and playing it back over again. Because I'm not just listening at what he is saying. I'm looking at his body language. I'm looking at his face and at the tears that's almost, that's really in his eyes. But, but he's restraining himself to keep from crying. But they're there. As he talks about how certain individuals of our society, certain leaders in our society would stoop to the level that they have stooped to. But, but it's not new to us. It's not new to us. Even as people of color, 
as we come to know that these are things that even in America, as the, as the words of Doc Rivers said, the coach of the Philadelphia 76ers, he says he got to the place, he says, I'm tired of loving our country and our country not loving us back. So how do you handle those things? How do you continue to muster the strength, the energy, the passion to keep on giving to a country that oftentimes does not love you back and in many cases still does not treat you as equal? Hmm. Love it. Don't stop giving. Don't stop loving. Don't stop caring. Even in a country like the United States of America. So tonight I want to share some words from Paul as he describes for us what the heart of a champion looks like. Paul gives us some words here in this text. The apostle Paul is a great example of one who has a great desire to keep the faith and finish the course. Paul had been in prison. Paul had been whipped. He had been beaten. He had been stoned. He had been shipwrecked. Gall and our sleep and food. And been in danger from various elements. Yet Paul remained firm in his pursuits. I really could stop the lesson right there because if you take anything away from the life of Paul, Paul had a, deter a great determination. Even in the midst of everything that was done to him and things that were said about him, Paul was fully convinced as of who he was and who he belonged to. So no matter what what the, what people said or what people did against him or did to him, Paul understood his mission and his mandate. I know it's hard sometimes to keep plugging ahead when you got so many darts being thrown at you. But, but the heart of a champion is one who does not allow these types of things to deter them from the mission that God has assigned to their life. Look at this. His, accomplishment, his accomplishments are unparalleled. When we look at the list of his achievements for advancing the kingdom of God, they are mind-blowing. When you look at the circumstances under which he did these things. They, they would be great even by themselves. But when you add to the, to the resume tonight of, of the conditions in which Paul worked under, then it gives us a greater appreciation for what he did. <clears throat> Look at this. This one letter he is to the Corinthian church. He paints for us four pictures of endurance. Here's the first one. In verse 8 of our text. He says we are pressured in every way. But not crushed. King James reads like this. We are troubled on every side. Yet not distressed. That's a picture of pressure. That's a picture of pressure. The picture here. If you will. Is of a football quarterback. Who is being blitzed by the defense but he evades the tackle the blitz is coming he, he, he recognizes he, when he lines up behind the center and he's at the line of scrimmage and he's looking out over the defense he sees the blitz coming but even with knowing that the blitz is coming he doesn't call time out or he doesn't say, I, I didn't sign up for this, I'm out, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hang up my cleats, I'm going to the side. No, he stays there understanding that the blitz is coming, but he knows within himself he has the ability and the knowledge to evade the tackles. Talk to me tonight. That's the heart of a champion. Even, even though we see some things coming at us, even though 
we know some things are being said about us and being done to undermine who we are and undermine the work that we are striving to do for the kingdom of God. We don't check out just because. No, we stay in the race because we understand tonight that the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but this race, this Christian race, is given to every man, every woman that endures to the end. Paul says, we're troubled on every side. Got pressure on every side. Of me. Everywhere I look, that, that, that's pressure, that's trouble. But he says, I'm hanging there in it. Then there's a picture, not only a pressure, but there's a picture of confusion. Look at it again. It's, it's, we're still in verse 8. He says we are perplexed. But not in despair. Paradoxical. We are perplexed. But we're not in despair. Here's a picture of someone sitting in their office. Amid statistics. Reports. Graphs. And plans. Not knowing where or whom to turn to for help, but not giving up and quitting. They, they see all of this stuff. They say, my God, how in the world am I going to get any of this done? How in the world am I going to get any of this accomplished? I'm perplexed by the, by the massiveness of the project, but I'm not in despair. Talk to me tonight. Talk to me tonight. Paul says, I see all of this stuff that's been laid on in my lap, if you will. And, and I understand and I have to recognize that it's a large task. But he says, but I'm not in despair. Paul said, when I look at it, it doesn't make me want to quit. Doesn't make me, in the words of old, doesn't make me want to throw up both my hands. <laughs> Talk to me. Tonight. Doesn't make me want to holler. That's the word. Make me want to holler and throw up both. No, Paul said, it doesn't make me want to do that. Even though I recognize the massiveness of what is against me. Paul says, but I'm not in despair. I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. So we see a picture of pressure. We see a picture of confusion. But then, beloved, we see a picture of being chased. Look at verse 9. Persecuted, but not forsaken. My God. Senator Cord Booker, when he was talking about Judge Jackson, he, he, he took the, the, the cue of when he said that she was his harbinger of hope. He, was, he led up to talking about that. He was talking about Harriet Tubman. And all that Harriet Tubman went through herself, being, being a slave, being born a slave, being beaten, all of those things, grossly mistreated as a human being, but was a regarded as being a human. And here when she when she escaped, here's the thing that he said that, 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 that we have to pay attention to. She got out, but she didn't forget others who were still on the plantation. Here's a woman who's gone through such gross mistreatment. And, and yet when she reaches freedom herself, she says, my job now becomes to lead others to freedom. I'm persecuted. I'm being chased by men who don't like the color of my skin, who don't like who I am. They got dogs after me and after those who are with me, but I'm still going to march them to freedom. Talk to me tonight, somebody. Here we are, beloved. Here we are. Paul says we, we, we are persecuted, but we are not forsaken. Even though we go through some things, being hunted like wild animals, but eluding and out, outlasting, outdoing those who are chasing us and pursuing us. And you got to understand that they're not pursuing us as if this is fun and games. They're pursuing us. Their mission and their, their mandate is to not only capture you, but sometimes many of them were killed out in those woods. They were shot on sight. So you got that type of individual chasing after you. And 
Paul says, trouble sometimes chase after us. We are persecuted, but we are not in this. Not forsaken. Not forsaken. God has not forgotten us. Not abandoned. So we see a picture of oppression. We see a picture of confusion. We see a picture of being chased. But then also we see a picture of being thrown down. Say in verse 9. He said, cast down, but not destroy. Mm, again, that's paradoxical. Here it is. I think back to, I, I came up in a time when you, 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 you had some great boxers in the ring, and certainly one that leaps off the pages at me. There were others. But but Muhammad Ali, um, Sugar Ray Leonard, you, you got all those guys. Uh, later on, you had, of course, you had Mike Tyson, um, Evander Holyfield, all, all those guys. But the picture here is of a boxer who's in a ring facing his opponent, being knocked down, but has the strength and the fortitude to get back up. Life is gonna knock us down sometimes, beloved. I'm not, I'm not gonna try to sugarcoat this and make this seem like you won't never be knocked down. You won't never be knocked off of your feet or, or have the wind not taken out of your cell. No, you, you're gonna get knocked down sometimes by life. But, but here's the thing. You got to have the courage. You got to have the strength, the fortitude, the mindset to get back up and continue on fighting. Can you see yourself in any of these pictures? It's a picture of pressure. Huh. It's a picture of confusion. It's a picture of being chased. It's a picture of being thrown down. Do you feel pressure sometimes? I'm sure you do. But let me just ask the question. What about confused? What about being chased? Feel like uh, nothing is working or no one is working on, on your behalf and everybody is out to, out to get you. Now, I'm not talking about this made of stuff. I'm talking about in reality. Thrown down. What about that? Keep rising. Keep fighting. Keep reaching for the stars, even if you land among the clouds. Don't, don't let that be a deterrent. You may not get there, but at least you're not where you was. Talk to me, somebody. You, you may not go as far as you would like or have dreamt of. But, but listen, here's the thing. that You're not where you used to be because here's the thing that I know about vision. When you have a vision, your vision, whatever it is, for your life, for your business, for your family, for a church, for, for a country, when you have a true vision, that vision has the power to pull you into the future. But, but, but now you got to understand, along the way, it's not going to be sunny all the time. You're going to run into some storms along the way. But as you encounter those storms, allow those storms to turn into the fuel and the fire that feeds you to keep pushing ahead. But then number two tonight, what's the secret of endurance? All too often, people are defeated. Not because they lack ability. No, it's not because they don't have the ability, but because they quit too soon. That's the problem. Many people lose heart and throw in the towel before the game is finished. I, I've been watching, I, again, y'all already know this, I'm, I'm a big sports advocate. I love to watch sports and I've been watching the NCAA tournament and I watched uh, last night and uh, I was watching the, uh, excuse me, the uh, the other night I was watching them on the, this is this is a recording, so just keep in mind. <laughs> so I was watching Friday night, watching the NCAA tournament. I was watching, I was flipping between uh North Carolina and I was watching uh, the University of Miami play Ohio State. And, and and 
in the North Carolina game, North Carolina kept getting behind. They, they catch up, get ahead a little bit, and they fall behind. And then sometimes they, they, they were self-destructing. They, they, they would take ill-advised shots. They would just come down and just, and I'm sitting there talking to the TV as if they could hear me. I'm saying, well, why, why don't take an ill-advised shot? If the shot comes in the flow of the offense, that's one thing. But to come down the court and just simply jack up a three that is contested, it's, it's, it doesn't make sense. And I'm like, Y'all gonna mess around and lose a game, not because the other team has more ability or more talent, but because you are a hazard to your own self. And sometimes that's what happens, beloved. We, we do things that are ill-advised, that are a detriment to our own selves, and, and we miss the fact that I have the ability to win this game. I know that my skills are on par, or perhaps even better, but I self-destruct. And you can't quit, even when you get down, because there has to be something inside of you that says, I know I can win this game. I know I got the ability. I know I have the talent. I know I have the skill. And not only that, there's enough time left on the clock. The clock is not my enemy right now. I still got time. And I want to say to you, I want to say to somebody tonight, you still have time. Whatever God has given or oppressed in your spirit, there's still time, but don't waste time. There's still time, but don't waste time. In other words, you got to get up now and start doing what God has called and commanded and, and already he's equipped you to do. Two times in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul wrote these words, we do not give up. In verse 1, he says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. That is, we don't give up. That's one of them. But then in verse 16, he says again, he says, for which cause we faint not. Paul said, we don't give up. We don't give up. We don't give up. He uncovers the secrets of endurance. Let me wrap this up. What are some secrets? What are some secrets that will help us keep fighting and not give up? Here it is. We got to realize that problems are real. Problems are real. Doesn't matter who you are. Problems are real. Problems are, are a part of life. They're a fact of life. And we must expect them. Life is not always going to be a joy ride. Life is not always going to be a, a sunny, a perfect day at the beach. No. There's going to be some problems, and you got to realize that problems are real. But then, number two, you got to you got to release the power of God in your life. We have a secret weapon in facing the difficulties and pressures of life. Now we have this treasure in clay jars. I'm still in Second Corinthians four, verse seven, so that this extraordinary power may be from God and not from us. Hear what Paul says. Paul says that power of endurance didn't come from you. Didn't come from humanity. That power comes from God. We are like clay pots. We are fragile and we are easily broken. But we have to, we have a stabilizing force within us to prevent us from cracking under pressure. Some people wonder how you can maintain your cool. <laughs> when the old you would have by now you would have taken matters into your own hand but something with you restrains you and gives you peace gives you comfort gives you that stable mind to say listen I, I ain't taking the bait again I go back to, to, uh, to Judge Jackson I, I watched her as she sat there with some of those stupid questions that they were asking her and here's a woman who sat as Senator Cord Brooker said sat with grit and grace just said they're known. It's like, like I'm, 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 I'm way more, I'm smarter than, than the vast majority of y'all in this room, and yet y'all are asking me questions. I should be the one asking y'all some questions. This woman is not, a, not, not, not illiterate. She, she's a very highly intelligent individual, and yet because it is nothing, you can say what you want to say. It's nothing more than the color of her skin. 
that have led to some of those baseless questions. But I'm going to get off that. She got to release the power of God. But then uh, here's the other thing. Respond to other people's needs. This thought goes against our very nature. Most often when we are confronted with trouble, the more selfish we become. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. More, most often, whenever we are confronted with trouble, the more selfish we become. Hmm. The more we become wrapped up in our own selfish interests and concern. But enduring strength comes not comes not by becoming selfish, but by becoming selfless. Again, last week we talked about uh, egomaniac and ego protective. Two sides of opposites coin. One thinks they are much better than everybody else, and the other one thinks, how, thinks completely less of themselves than everybody else. They always think that somebody's out to get them. That's the ego protective. And the key to all of that as we said again last week, it's humility. But then lastly, you got to regain a new perspective. Endurance comes by discovering a new way of looking at the situation. Again, let me read this. Let me read these verses once again, and we're going to close with this. Paul says, we are troubled on every side. That's a new perspective. But yet, but here it is. Here's a new perspective. Yet not distressed. That's the new perspective. We are perplexed. I recognize the situation. Here's a new perspective, but not in despair. Persecuted or being chased. That's the reality. That's, that's the realness of the problem. Paul says, I understand what the problem is. I face it. I own the problem. But here's the new perspective, but not forsaken. That's the new perspective. Here it is. Cast down. I'm being thrown down. I'm being cut under. The, the, the rug is being snatched from under my feet. But here's a new perspective. But not destroyed. That's a new perspective. And you got to have a new perspective when you're going through some things. In order to display this heart of a champion. The key to persistence is perspective. How do you view what you're going through? Some view it. Some people come out of storms bitter. Others come out of storms better. And the only person that can make that decision is you. You got to decide, how am I going to come out of this thing? Am I going to come out of this thing displaying the heart of a champion? Understanding that life is, is not a fairy tale. Life is not a made up of, of, of always just good times and bad times. Never, I mean, always made up good times and never bad times. No, 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 no. No matter what you are, no matter where you are, no matter your financial portfolio, there will be some bad days. But it's how... You analyze and look at those things. Will you allow those things? As Paul shared with us tonight. Paul says, I understand what the problem is. I own it. I realize it. But Paul says, I got a new perspective. And I would, I would encourage you tonight, no matter where you are, in your situations and your circumstances, change your perspective. As, a, as, a, as the psalmist said, and I close, I will lift up my eyes to the heat. From whence cometh my help? That's a rhetorical question. Then he answers it. He says, all of my help comes from God. That's a new perspective. I own the fact that I got trouble. I got some trouble. Paul says, I got trouble on every side. Wall to wall trouble all around me. But I ain't going to let it keep me down. I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to keep pushing. Because I possess the heart of a champion. God bless you and keep you is our prayer.